Let's lift up our hands everywhere and appreciate the Lord this morning. Give him thanks from the depth of your hearts. Magnify his name. Bless him this morning. Give him all the glory and the praise. Appreciate him. Magnify him. Give him praise. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Give him thanks and praise for the privilege to appear in his presence this morning. Lift up your voice everywhere. Magnify his name. Adore him and give him all the glory. Bless him this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, are you giving him thanks this morning? Magnify his name. You are in the sanctuary, not in the mortuary. Give him thanks and praise. Magnify his name. Bless him this morning. From the depth of your heart, is someone giving God thanks this morning? Appreciate him and magnify his name. Give him all the thanks and the praise in the name of Jesus. Now begin to ask the Lord for your word of fruitfulness this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you blessed us and you said be fruitful. Lord, I receive my own word of fruitfulness this morning. In the name of Jesus. Is somebody praying to the Lord this morning? I receive my own word of fruitfulness this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every barren area of my life, by the word this morning, they are converted to fruitful field. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your great and mighty work in our midst. Truly confirming your word that when men say there is a casting down, for us there will be a lifting up. Amen. Lord, thank you for the blessings of fruitfulness. You have not left us without a witness. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of business opened us. Lord, we give you all the praise. Again, this morning, all eyes wait upon you, my Father. Your word says you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Again, this morning, by your word, satisfy our desires in the name of Jesus. By your word, this morning, let every area of barrenness, area of fruitlessness in our lives, be converted to fruitful field in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. We ask that you move in our midst because you are the Lord of fruitfulness. Let it be, O oh God, today that everyone under the sound of my voice, there will be a touch of fruitfulness in every desired areas of their life in the name of Jesus. We vow to return to give you thanks because we know you are set to exceed our expectations. We give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Your loud amen. amen. Give Jesus your big, big hand of praise. And you may please be seated. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Today, there will be all around fruitfulness for you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say, well, me, I've closed the factory. No more. But here it is. Your business will yet experience fruitfulness. Amen. Your career will experience fruitfulness. Amen. Your academics will experience fruitfulness. Amen. Your business will experience fruitfulness. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For those testimonies, again, this morning, give the Lord your big hand of praise. Like we had in that testimony, the doctor said, unconfirmed infertility. infertility. That is, they can't trace the reason why she was still infertile. But here it is this morning, by the word of the Lord, no matter what the doctor has said concerning your fruitfulness, by his word coming your way this morning, that barrenness shall be turned to fruitfulness. Amen. Remember the Bible said, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Say with me, nothing. nothing. <laughs> if unconfirmed source of unfruitfulness was terminated, then your own case is small. Say with me, my own case is small. 
We have had cases seven years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and they still carry their babies. Now, hear me, no matter what the reason might be, either diagnosed or undiagnosed, by the word coming your way this morning, that fruitlessness is turned to fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me hear your loud amen. amen. I'd like to welcome us again to this very special communion service. And please, let's take note, all of our online worshippers, um, you want to give your offerings, your tithes, please, as much as you can, try and join us at our service on Wednesday at Holy Trinity, where, you know, you can drop your offerings there. You just ensure you register before coming for the service. Or better still, you can drop them at your home cell. And those of us that know the mission house, you can also come around to, during the office hour to drop your offerings. Jesus is Lord. Now, our focus for this month of February 2021 is faith secures fulfillment of prophecies. Can somebody echo that with me? And the anchor scripture is in Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. Luke chapter 1 verse 45, the Bible said, Blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance. Show me performance. Faith is what brings about performance. There can never be fruitfulness outside of faith. Fruitfulness is a product of active faith. Until the spirit be poured on I, he said the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful field and a fruitful field be counted for a forest. But that only answers by faith. Jesus said, somebody touched me. Peter said, Master, everyone is thronging you. Why would you say somebody touched me? He said, no, I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman was brought before Jesus, he said, why is it that you thought? He said, well, this is the reason. I have said in my heart, if only I may but touch the hem of your garment, I will be made whole. Well. Now, as you stretch out your faith this morning, every area of barrenness, I speak to you by the word of the Lord, they are turned to fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Our teaching line is captioned on engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecies. Engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecies. I want to be sharing with us something very powerful and interesting this morning. Now we have the subject of the power of faith and we have the subject of fulfillment of prophecies. How powerful is faith? Let's begin from there. Faith is a powerful force that the universe recognizes. There are forces, but there is a force, and that is the force of faith. Hebrews chapter 11, from verse 1, we read down the line, we see the display of the power of faith. He said, through faith, they subdue kingdom. They wrought righteousness. Out of weakness were made strength. Through faith, the women receive their dead son back to life. In the words of God's servants, faith is a universal currency. It holds the same value everywhere. That you are in UAE here does not make faith impotent. Faith has a universal value everywhere you can find it. Everywhere you deploy faith, faith delivers.
Look at verse 11. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Agasun trolia bashange gegatalalia. It's a true faith also. Say with me also. also. What happened? Sarah herself receives strength to conceive. Sin. So it takes faith to conceive. Ah, open your eyes. And I pray the Holy Ghost open your eyes here. For everyone trusting God for the fruit of the world, trusting God for the conception of business ideas, see how it works here. He said, through faith also, Sarah herself receives strength. So you need strength to receive the seed. She receives strength to conceive. And not only that, she was delivered of a child when she was past age. That is how powerful faith can be. Faith has the power to reverse the irreversible. Faith has power to alter the unalterable. Even when she was past age, in other words, her case was closed. But by faith, she received power to conceive. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice this morning. You are receiving power to bring forth testimony in the name of Jesus. Now, let's move on to talk about prophecies. What are prophecies? Prophecies, please take note of this. Prophecies are not man-made, but God-made. They are not man-made. No, no, no. Don't ever see prophecy. Don't say, no. They are not man-made. They are God-made. They always, I mean, genuine prophecies, they have the hand of God in it. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 to 21, clearly stated that. He said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. We are unto you do well. Yet take heed as unto a light that shine in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of private interpretation. That is, verse 21. Verse 21. He said... For prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. It's not by the will of man. Prophecies have God in it, not the will of man. He said, but holy men were moved. Hallelujah. Is somebody with me this morning? Prophecies are coming to pass in your life. <laughs> you know why? Because it's not man made. Hello. It's not what? If it were to be man, man can say, I will do this. And tomorrow he say, I'm not doing anything. But that is not God. And what did the Bible say? He said, God is not a man that will lie. Neither the son of a man that will repent. Has he said a thing and will he not do it? As he stretched forth his hand and said, no, I'm straight, retrieving him back. No, God is not man. So prophecies are not man-made. They are God-made. And you know what? Turn around era. Turn around 2021. It's not man-made. It's God-made. And what's the meaning? Year 2021, as heaven lives, every one prophetic word concerning you, they are coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me hear your loud Amen. Now, look at this definition the Holy Ghost gave me about prophecy. What are prophecies? Prophecies, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, are God's declaration of the end from the beginning. 
God's declaration of the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46 verse 10. He said, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure before they happen. <laughs> Oh, it is too late for you to be buried. Why? He said, and God said, let's make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion and what follow. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful. Say with me, be fruitful. <laughs> And now, Isaiah 46, verse 10, is declaring the end from the beginning. So, in the beginning, God had already declared you to be fruitful. Ah. And what followed? He said, my counsel shall stand, and I will do my pleasure. And what is God's pleasure? Is that you be fruitful and multiply. Somebody has conceived already. Amen. <laughs> Let me hear you loud, amen. amen. Listen to me. Listen now. It didn't take much for Mary to conceive. It was just the word. Yes, Be it unto me. And she got that word. Now, this is what God is saying. God is saying, I declare the end from the beginning. And what is it that he has declared about you? He said, Be fruitful. Be fruitful. I said to someone this morning, be fruitful. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody is not catching up with me yet. How did creation came to be? Hello? Is somebody with me? Yes, sir. How did creation came to be? God carry cutlass, carry hoe, carry tractor. How? God just sat down and said, let there be light. Light came. Let there be the firmament. Firmament came. Let there be this and it came. I speak to someone again this morning. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus. In the fruit of your body, be fruitful. In the fruit of your land, be fruitful. In the fruit of your career, be fruitful. In all desired area of your existence, be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. Declaring the end from the beginning. Say with me, declaring the end. From the, from the beginning. Now, if you are still struggling with that in scripture, God's servant in his testimony said, before faith tabernacle was built, he had told him. Even before they got the land, God said, like a tent that will seat 50,000 people. What was God saying? He was declaring the end from the beginning. At another time, in their meeting, in the powerhouse, what followed? He said, God began to speak. He said, he saw wings flying in the sky. He said, what is that? He said, you are the one there bearing the everlasting gospel. He said, it's not just wings. He said, wings. Declaring the end from the beginning. Sir, don't play with what God is saying. And the good thing is this. This is the declaration of God. The scriptures is the declaration of God's intent for you. So every time you read God's word, and God's word said to him, Emmanuel, you will be a blessed above all things. That's just take it. God has declared the end from the beginning. Before you came, the word is here. While you are here, the word is still here. When we will no longer be here, the word will still remain. And that's why the Bible calls it the small, sure word of prophecy. Somebody's blessed. Somebody's blessed. Before that sickness came, you are already healed. <laughs> is somebody with me? He had declared the end from the beginning. He had declared the end from the beginning. He said declaring the end from the beginning. And you know something about God? God is a foresight God. He said to Jeremiah, Before I formed thee in your mother's womb, I know you. 
Not only knowing you, I know you and I have ordained you as a prophet to nation. Is somebody with me? Yes, the name you are bearing before they gave birth to you, God knows. Yes, your heights before you came, God knows. So don't struggle to reduce your height. Your height is the best for the assignment he has for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Now, how powerful are prophecies? So that you will respect them. In other words, while I was just preparing, God said, my people don't respect my words. We no longer respect the word of God. That's why it appears as if we are not seeing them come to pass. We don't respect it. God is saying, I would have declared the former things. I've declared the end from the beginning. And this is what I'm saying about you, but still you don't respect it. You choose to respect what the doctor says. You choose to respect what situation tells you. You choose to respect what circumstances tells you. God said, tell my people to learn to respect my word. God is not going to say anything new that he has not said before. Is somebody with me? Is somebody with me? Is somebody getting blessed? It was an express instruction God said to me to let you know. He said, tell my people to respect my word. To respect prophecies. And what are prophecies? They are the declarations of God. The declarations of the end from the beginning. If you respect that you will be blessed above all nations. And you will not borrow. You will not go and borrow. If you respect the fact that God said that my son, marriage is honorable, bed undefiled. You will not break, you will not defy your bed if you respect him. Is somebody blessed? Yes, How powerful are prophecies? Prophecies carry inbuilt power for fulfillment. They don't need, they, they carry inbuilt power for fulfillment. Isaiah 55 verse 10 and 11. As the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bore, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the things. It shall prosper. What is he talking about? He saying my word, not your word. My word. God is saying my word will prosper in the things I sent it. My word, not your word. It has capacity. It has inbuilt power for fulfillment. Say with me here. Yeah. Say with me again here. Yeah. There are some systems, some branded systems. They have capacity to deliver, it's inbuilt capacity. You know, just like some laptops, when you charge it, it has capacity to come on on its own, it has capacity to retain electricity. The same way with God's word, it has capacity, inbuilt power for fulfillment. Inbuilt, and that's where our faith comes in. That's, he said, blessed is she that believes. He said, the words that have come out of my mouth is not permitted. Why would God be so audacious to say that? Because he knows what his word contains. He said, my word will not return to me. For it. You know, you can't say that when you don't know what the word contains. You can't say that. The doctor that gives you a prescription about a particular drug, why is he warning you that don't take overdose? Because he knows the content of that drug. He knows what overdose will do to your system. Now, this is God saying, I know the content of my word. And the content is this. He has capacity to deliver. Respect God's word. Say, I respect the word of God. Respect the word. He said, a thousand shall fall by your side. And ten thousand by your side. And, you know, he says, evil shall not come near thee. So why are you not afraid of a witch? You know what means ten thousand by your side? And ten thousand, you know, a thousand by your side and ten thousand by your side. Eleven thousand people. Imagine eleven thousand people, for example. Just imagine. Is somebody with me? Imagine eleven thousand people. 
That is, 11,000 people are permitted to die before anything evil happens to you. 11,000. Respect is what? Respect is what? Respect is what? He said, you will trample on serpent and scorpion, and they shall by no means hurt you. That word carries the power. It carries the inbuilt ability. Respect the word. Luke 1, 34 to 35. Mary said, how shall this be? God said, well, you are still, in, you know, you are, you are still coming up. I will explain to you. He said, for I know not a man. That is, God's, God's word doesn't need your assistance. You are too small to assist the word of God. He said, and the angel answered. He said, because you didn't know. He said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Number two, how powerful are prophecies? God speaks according to his capacity, not our limitations. God speaks according to his capacity, not our limitation. Prophetic word according to the capacity of God and not your limitation. As a matter of fact, Paul understood this. That's why he said, in my weakness is made strength. My weakness is made strength. My weakness is made strength. You think you can't get it done. God is not banking on your ability. It's not banking on your limitation. It's not banking on your, you know, your academic pedigree. No, he's banking on himself. He said, when nobody could bring me out, I brought myself out. By my own hand, I brought myself out. Respect his word. <laughs> Say, I will respect his word. Say, I will respect his word. Now, let's begin to round up. Let's put the two together now. How does faith, therefore, facilitate the fulfillment of prophecy? We started with the power of faith. Now we know what prophecies are. We know now that prophecy comes with power because it comes from God. Now, how do we now accomplish, the, you know, see the fulfillment of prophecies by faith. Please note that it will always take the hand of God to deliver any prophetic agenda. It will always take the hand of God to deliver any prophetic agenda. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 15, Solomon gave us an expo. And what was the expo? He said, And blessed be the Lord of Israel. Which speak, and what is it that God speaks? When we say God speaks, that's prophecy. Is somebody with me? He said, blessed the Lord God, which speak with his mouth unto David my father, and hath with his hand. Do what? Fulfill it. But how do we get the hand of God? He said, we can only provoke the hand of God by our faith. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1. Who had believed our report and unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. Unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. So, it is our faith that brings the hand of God to bear. It's our faith that brings the hand of God to bear. Now, haven't laid that foundation. How does this happen? Now, we have three keys here. But we'll look at one in each of the services. How then do I engage the hand of God to deliver the fulfillment of prophecies? Is somebody blessed? Is somebody blessed? Number one. You must give yourself wholly to the demands of prophecies. Prophecies, we said, they carry capacity. They carry God's ability. But you must give yourself to the demands of prophecy. Remember, in the world of God's servants, any faith that places Absolute responsibility on God is fake. The same thing, any prophecy that places 
fulfillment ability 100% on God is not a genuine prophecy. There is always a demand that prophetic word will place on you. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15, instruction there, he said, Meditate upon these things. Give yourself. Say with me, give yourself. Give yourself. Say, give yourself. give yourself. Say, I will give myself. Holy to them that my profiting may appear. Now, if we read Luke chapter 5, verse 3 to 8. Luke chapter 5, verse 3 to 8. We saw Peter there. Jesus asked him, let me use your boat. And he used his boat. And after, Pete, Jesus said to him, cast your nets. He said, Master, we have toiled all night and we have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, we will let down the net. And when they let down the net, they caught fishes and their net broke. From that passage, that's in Luke chapter 5, verse 3 to 8, we see one of the demands of fulfillment of prophecy. And what is that demand? Simply, it is the demand of obedience. Say with me, obedience. obedience. Say with me, obedience. obedience. Looking at this story, you discover that God is not a user of men. Jesus entered into the porch of Peter. Trust it a little bit. Let me use it as a platform to preach. In other words, he used his time, used his talents, used his resources, and God said, Jesus said, now it is time to reward you. Launch into the deep. Now, Peter was almost missing out, like so many of us. Master, I've told all night, you, you don't know fishing. I know fishing. I'm a born trained fisher, fisherman. As a matter of fact, Jesus acknowledged it just the next chapter. He said, Peter, 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 you will no longer be a fisher of men. You will no longer be a fisher, but you will now be a fisher of men. That means Jesus salute him. He knows he was a Baba fisherman. Jesus said to him, look, cast your net here. You see, that is what it takes. That is a demand you must give yourself to if you will see prophecy fulfilled. It talks about giving ourselves to whatsoever God is asking you to do. Jesus said, cast your net to this side. Cast your net this side. Cast it this side. He started making excuses, like so many of us do, often time. Lord, I have tried everything. I've done this. I've done that. This thing seems not to be working. Prophecies seem not to be coming to pass. Jesus is saying, do what I ask you to do. Hear me, beloved. Fulfillment of prophecies is at the mercy of obedience. <laughs> the fulfillment of prophecy, the coming to pass of prophetic word is at the mercy of your obedience. Is at the mercy of your obedience. Is at the mercy of your obedience. <laughs> it is not enough to know about prophetic word. We must be willing to follow the instructions that comes with it. <laughs> it is not enough to know about obedience, you know, prophetic word. We must be willing to obey the instructions that comes with it. Take the story of God's servant, Bishop Edipo, for example. God said to him, 
The hour has come to liberate the world from all the oppressions of the wicked through the preaching of the word of faith, and I'm sending you to undertake that task. A global mandate. And he said, he observed, the church was not growing. He said, he did a calculation that if the church continues to grow like this, he said, he will be 100 years, the church will not have crossed 1,000 people. And God said, okay, he went and fasted and prayed and said, Lord, what is the way out? And God gave him, he said, this is the prophecy. This is the prophecy. And God gave him a word. He said, look, this is the word the devil is using to blindfold the eyes of people, but you know, speak against it. And he spoke against it. And he didn't clear. He said, now that the darkness is clear, he said, keep sowing the seed. Keep the grass green. Keep sowing the seed. He said, the sheep will come. Keep the grass green. The sheep will abide. Ah. And he said, Lord, if that is what it takes, I will keep sowing the seed. And not only that, I will keep the grass green. And that's why you see people keep coming. He obeyed. Recently, God was saying to me, he said, Emmanuel, don't worry. Just keep sowing the seed. It might appear as if the thing is not making any sense. Keep sowing the seed. Keep sowing the seed. And that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm sowing the seed. The seed of fruitfulness. The seed of breakthroughs. The seed of open doors. And as the Lord God of heaven live, at the appointed time, they will return with bountiful harvest. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. So the question is, are you obeying his instructions? To the one that desired the blessing, what did he say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that the Gentiles are dying. They are pursuing day and night. It will be added. Are you pursuing his kingdom? <laughs> are you obeying his kingdom? You see, if you are not ready to obey, you are not ready to see prophecy come to pass. God's servant said, Obedience may be costly. He said, but the end results are priceless. Obedience may be costly. Not may, it's always costly. The Bible said, that man, he that goeth forth, bearing precious seed, shall what? Shall doubtless return with the sheet. He didn't say. That's, he goeth for weeping. It was pricely. It was costly. But you know what? He returned with the sheaves in his hand. Why? Because he believed and he chose to act on his belief. Sir, the devil came late too. Is somebody with me? What did I say? The devil came late. Because now, if he had known, he would have stopped you from hearing this word. But now he can't stop you. He couldn't stop you from hearing this word. And the seed has been planted. That means every prophetic word, they are coming to pass. Amen. Did I hear you loud? Amen. Say so prophecies are coming to pass. Say it again. Say so prophecies are coming to pass. Do you know that God doesn't need your smartness? He only needs your obedience. <laughs> he doesn't need your smartness. I know um, you are smart. He knows Peter was smart. But he said, Peter, 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 Peter. I don't need that, your smartness. Put it here. He says, in the night we can catch fish. He said, no, I don't need that. Put, obey me. You see, the secret of men is in their story. God's servant will always tell us, say, look, if I stop doing what I'm doing, if I say, if pride enter me and I stop doing what I'm doing, what God is asking, you see, God will bring somebody who will be saying the same thing. He will get the same results. Why? Knowing that, look, it's only my obedience that is paying for me. You remember Abraham, what did the Bible say? God began to swore. He said, Abraham, you mean you did this because of me. In blessing, I will bless you. But what was it that Abraham did? God said, Abraham sacrificed Isaac. And that same night, he woke up early in the morning, took Isaac and went and sacrificed. 
That same night, obedience is the key. You know, God has said to him in Genesis chapter 12, listen to me, there is no fulfillment of prophecy outside of obedience. Let me say that again. There is no fulfillment of prophecy outside of obedience. There is no fulfillment of prophecy outside of obedience. God prophesied to Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 down the line, verse 1, 2, and 3. I will bless you. A blessing, I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. But it didn't come to pass until obedience was, Abraham's obedience was tested. It was after he passed that test that God began to swear, in blessing, I will bless thee. And what happened at the end of the day, at the end of the life of Abraham, and Abraham was blessed in all things. Abraham was blessed in all things, but what? He had to pass the test of obedience. I want to close this session this morning by asking us, how obedient are we? How obedient. And you know something about God. Let me say you something about God. God is jealous. God is a jealous God. He is also jealous about his instructions. In other words, he will not give you another instruction if you have not obeyed the first one he gave you. He will not give you another instruction if you have not obeyed the previous. No. He will choose to give to another that will obey. If Abraham had not obeyed the first instruction, he would give it to somebody else. But when Abraham obeyed, you know what God said? Do you know what it means for God to say? To call a man his friend. Because he was a man that was always out to obey him. Get in the money, Abraham is there. Circumcise, Abraham is there. Let this woman go, Abraham is there. He wasn't rationalizing God's instructions. Forget your smartness. Go for obedience. Forget your smartness. Go for obedience. Forget your smartness. Go for his obedience. Go to obey. And you know what the Bible said? All scriptures are given. 2 Corinthians 3.16. They are given. Is it 2 Corinthians? 2 Timothy 3.16. All scriptures are given by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. They are profitable for doctrine. They are profitable for instructions. 75% of scriptures, they are instructions. Before you look for what this word will do, look for what you will obey. And as you obey those words, you see them coming to pass in your life. Somebody's blessed. Amen. If you are blessed, say I'm blessed. Amen. Say it a louder, say I'm blessed. Amen. Now give the Lord your big hand of praise. Amen. On this covenant day of fruitfulness, please take note of the following. By redemption, you and I, we are trees of righteousness. Isaiah 61 verse 3, we are trees of righteousness and we are also spiritual branches of the true vine and every branch of the vine is ordained to be fruitful. Every branch of the branch, you know, every vine, every true vine is ordained to be fruitful. If a branch is not having challenge, it's ordained to bear fruit as long as it remains connected. And the Bible describes us as tree of righteousness. So that means everything about our life should speak fruitfulness. Say with me, fruitfulness. Your business, fruitfulness. Your career, fruitfulness. Your academics, fruitfulness. And what is fruitfulness? Bringing fruits. Listen to me. Anything that is not generating new, new things is barren. Is somebody with me? Yes. If a pastor, you are not getting new converts, is a barren ministry. If a church, the church is not growing, is a barren church. It should, bring, it should bring forth new, new things. I pray for someone this morning. Every area of your life that is not bringing forth new, new things. By the word this morning, they are bringing forth new in the name of Jesus. So if you are still doing things the way you were doing it 15 years ago, is some level of barrenness. 
Even those that are baking cakes, the way they are baking cake now, they are not baking cake like they used to bake before. Am I speaking? Am I speaking? Yes, sir. I ate one cake recently. And I said, is this cake? They said, yes, this cake. I said, this is how they do cake now. Because, you know, the cake we used to do, when we used to go for birthday, people's houses then. <laughs> it's no longer the one we are. <laughs> it's somebody with me. So new, new things at the end. Even God himself said, forget the former things. I will do. That means God is fruitful. Forget the former things, I will do something. God is doing something new in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. By law of creation, every tree is created to bring forth fruit. By the law of creation, every tree is created to bring forth fruit. So what is our responsibility? Trusting God for fruit of the womb. Be all out to serve God. You see, the pattern cannot change. Be all out to serve God. Exodus 23, 25, and 26. Be all out to serve God. Lose yourself. That's it. Get lost in serving God. Get lost in serving God. Number two, engage the force of revelation. Fruitfulness is an inheritance. But you need to see it. You need to see it. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you your inheritance amongst them that are sanctified. So fruitfulness, you need revelation. You need to see it. And what is it I'm saying? You asking you to see this morning. From the beginning, God said, be fruitful. And every word of prophecy comes with ability. So that word, be fruitful, comes with ability to make you fruitful. Hello? Can I say something that might be above somebody said this morning? You know, you might not need somebody to say, oh, it's only Mary that didn't meet a man before he conceived. You can conceive by the word. Hello? Is somebody with me? That whatever you now do after the word will just be complimentary. I had a testimony God served and shared. A man came for his, you know, Came for, came for a fruitfulness service like this. And he said, now, be fruitful this hour. And the person believed. Sir, that very hour. Now, I can tell you this because I've seen it work. Becoming fruitful by the word. By the word. By the word. I stand on this word this morning. <laughs> For someone trusting God for physical fruit, fruit of the womb, according to this time of life, today is 12th of February 2021. Before nine months or nine months on the dot, you are returning with your babies in your hand in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. If you believe, say I believe. If you receive, say I receive it. Now, number two. Have faith in God and keep hoping on him. Have faith in God and keep hoping on him. Have faith. Have faith. Say with me, I have faith. Say it again, say I have faith. Number three, or number four now. Maintain the joy of the Lord in your heart. Joel 1, 11 and 12. Maintain the joy of the Lord in your heart. Don't look like as if you are the only one that have problems. No. Maintain the joy of the Lord. Maintain the joy of the Lord. Don't let anybody trace it to you that look, oh, you are waiting on God on this area. Don't. Let the joy of the Lord saturate everything around you. And you know what? The people that are laughing at you, very shortly they will laugh with you. Amen. Did I hear you loud, amen? Yeah. And you know, there's something about this commission. is a fruitful commission. Is what? Everything we are doing, everything we do here is fruitful. That means from today, everything you do will be fruitful. Yeah. Give the Lord your big head of praise. Please rise to your feet. Say, I'm fruitful. I'm fruitful. Say it again. Say, I'm fruitful. I'm fruitful. And as you have declared, it is answering for you. Yeah.
Let me hear your resounding amen. amen. Were you blessed by the word this morning? Yes. See on every side, on every side I'm, fruitful. I'm fruitful. No barrenness around me. No, around me. no, dryness, around me. no dryness around me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to pray for someone this morning that you have not given your heart to Jesus. That's where fruitfulness begins from. Is somebody with me? You have not given your heart to Jesus. I'd like you to pray. I want to pray with you this morning. Either you're on ground here or you're online. You want to say, Jesus, call me to... I want to begin to live a fruitful life. I'd like to pray with you this morning. All eyes closed, head bowed. You want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my heart to Jesus. Yeah, that's why I'm sent to you this morning. He wants to make you fruitful, but you have to pass these requirements. Pray with me this prayer. Or maybe you are born again before, but you are backslidden. Jesus still wants to save you. I'd like you to pray this prayer with me this morning. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. Jesus, come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me.